Okay, Nikki, you'd like to? I guess that's kind of why prayer is so important because it's like you're finally exercising the desire to know all these things and I guess like prayer is that desire to God, isn't it? To get responses from God. Mm -hmm. And so God can bring you things so much quicker than yes. you would have in a forced condition. Yes. And so you've got more of a chance to change quicker. Yeah, let's look yeah. at prayer, shall we? Because it's quite important to look at. I don't know if I've got it here somewhere. I think I have. Let me just find it. Oh, no, I mentioned it in the will, didn't I? Uh, sorry, I skipped over it in the will. So what I'll do is I'll just go back to the will principles and play that and go to the prayer section because it's an interesting example, right? Uh, maybe I haven't got them in the... I've got them in your outline, haven't I? Which one have I got? Oh, I've got no. it in Redemption and Transformation, haven't I? Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting too well versed with my own information. Let's uh, let's switch back and just go through the redemption principles. Actually, so we'll do the, we'll do the redemption principles, just to give you some idea of the difference between desire and will. So here's real. Redemption principles can be engaged with desire by making a choice to emotionally engage forgiveness and repentance with faith. Right. They can be engaged with God by sincerely desiring God's love and forgiveness. But they can be engaged also with will. They operate automatically with will by causing the creation of pain when we sin and the release of pain when pain becomes too intense. So what happens with will is that God has a whole heap of laws that respond to your will. And what happens is the pressure cooker pressure cooks us up, right? We get more and more intense intense pain, more and more intense pain, till you get to the stage where your pain threshold, your emotional pain threshold is exceeded. Now you just, you spur it open, don't you? Until the emotional pain threshold is low enough for you to cope again. Well, that's an example of redemption using will. Will is operating on your current condition and eventually it's going to force you to have a pressure cooker explosion. But it's not you having desire to do it. You just feel like you've got to do it because if you don't, you're just going to burst. So you do it. That's an example of redemption through will. Redemption through desire is different. Because redemption through desire says, hang on a sec, am I going to wait until the pressure cooker is almost exploding? Or am I going to start addressing these problems one by one now? That's what desire does. Why do I have this resistance to dealing with my, my emotion? Now my desire shifts. I start looking at why. I start trying to address the issue. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now I've got some hope to actually change that condition. Now, can you see that will-based changes, which are still possible, by the way, by having this forced upon you, right? That's how God redeems you with your will only. Like, Pretty much every person who ever passed from earth are in that state in the hells. And what I mean is they have no desire to know why. They have no desire to work out any of those things. All they have is a great big long list of all their sins that they eventually have to redeem. They don't even ask why this list is in front of them, the majority of them. They just feel forced. The next one comes up and they feel forced to have, to have, have, to have some emotions about it. The first emotion generally is anger. And then they go into some fear generally. And then they eventually get to the stage that, oh, they want certain things met and they have a big cry about the fact that those things are not getting met. And this happens naturally because God's laws are operating upon their current will condition. None of it's driven by their desire, right? But they're still changing because it's driven by the fact that God's laws operate upon the will, trying to correct the will from its current state. But a person with desire goes, why have I got this list in front of me? <laughs> What's going on with this list in front of me? Why does this list exist? 
what's going on? And he tries to get some kind of answers to these questions. Now, as soon as he exercises even the desire to know the answer to the questions, spirits come to him, who are assigned by God, by the way, to come to him and explain to him why the list exists and what's going on and what he needs to do about it and the two ways that he can deal with it. Can you see the difference? Yeah. One way, he's going to go through a long, drawn-out, maybe thousands of year process of just getting hammered by each sin until he no longer remembers it emotionally. The other is that he's got some desire to know why it's all happening and therefore engage some higher laws. That's his choice. That's your choice too, by the way, if you think about it. For the majority of you at the moment, you're just getting hammered by what you don't want to know. Right? And this, uh, this lets you ask why. Now you want to know. Now you've got some chance of actually changing things more rapidly. Does everyone get that? The difference between those two states. Yep. So the redemption principles is a great way of you know, seeing these differences between, between desire and the operation of desire and will and the operation of will. So we're not saying that you can't you, that you won't change eventually if you only have will. We're not saying that because the reality is the laws operate upon your will, correcting your will. They do. But it's going to be a long, drawn-out, painful experience. That's what it's going to be, guaranteed. Long, drawn-out, painful experience. With desire, a whole different set of laws are now engaged. Now we have the heart chance for it to not be a long, drawn-out, painful experience, but rather a much shorter experience driven by the fact that we now want to know why while it's happening. We want to correct things while they're occurring. Now we have a chance of changing much more rapidly. Now the same applies in the sixth dimension of the spirit world. A spirit in the sixth dimension has exercised their will to be self-reliant, and work through some of, when I say exercise their will, their will has been forced through the law to, for them to have these pressure cooker releases that eventually occur because they get too much pain and they eventually release one more thing and they release another thing and sometimes some awareness now grows, of course, as a result of these releases that occur. Now there's a smidge of desire being developed and so they start developing desire to do it more rapidly and eventually they get to the sixth dimension of the spirit world but they still have no desire for God. They still have a desire to be a self-reliant being. So they get to the sixth dimension of the spirit world and what do they do? Well, there's no desire driving them beyond that point. So the will is now going to be worked upon. And what, what's the will? The will out of harmony with love, with God's love, is such that there is a sin called the sin against the Holy Spirit and there's penalties for that sin. And one of the penalties for the sin is a feeling of personal worry and concern. And what they get worried and concerned about is this issue of whether they're ever going to die or not because they still don't know whether they were immortal or not. And so now they create educational institutions and in fact most of the universities in the sixth sphere are dedicated towards one particular subject. The, how to scientifically achieve immortality. That's the subject. And as you can imagine Immortality is quite a complex issue, being one of the highest of God's laws for the highest of God's creation. So it's going to be many, many millennia before they might even find out scientifically how to do it. But even then they won't be able to do it <laughs> because it requires the issue of connecting with God to do it, you see. And they stay in that state... They, so what's causing them now? Now they're generating some desire to know why. Why am I in this state? Can you see now they have a desire? There's a chance to change. Right? So, so what happens there is many celestial spirits come along and say, look, you've got to understand this thing about receiving God's love. Uh, you're just talking about the same crap again. You know, like, 
the same, you know, Christian thing from earth, you know, yeah, go away, I'm going to stay in my university and work it out the right way, you know. That's what they feel. And then, and then, of course, they stay in university another few years, usually it's another hundred or more, and then, and then another spirit comes along and says, you've still got a desire and you still haven't found out why. And I'm telling you why, right? And they go, no, it all just sounds like too much, you know, like it's all this, this religious crap you're trying to tell me. No, they're like, no, you know, I'm going to find out from a scientific way. So they go on another hundred years or two. But they still have a desire. But each hundred years or two that passes, because they're not progressing, their desire starts becoming quite annoying. <laughs> Can you see that? It's like you'll almost try anything, isn't it? It's like having a sickness or a disease on earth where the pain gets too great. You'll almost try anything to fix it, won't you? And it's the same for them. So they get to a point where they go, the next time somebody comes along and says, talks about God's love again and talks about the desire again, and what do they do this time? They go, ah, okay, you, you know, like, I'll give it a go. <laughs> you know, like, how do I give it a go? Well, that, that usually is another 50-year discussion uh, because it's got to overcome quite a lot of resistance in order for that to occur. But, but at least now their desire has led them into this new place where they want to know. Does that make sense? So that's how many six fear spirits get out of the six fear. So they're in a perfectly happy state. What they believe is a perfectly happy state. And without that will based beginning, where their will is get this annoyance of immortality, which is the God's laws operating upon the will, triggering, the, triggering them into a state of wanting to know the answer, which is now a desire to know why which they then engage, now they have a chance to change. Make sense? So it applies to every level of your existence. Hell, six fear, celestial spirit, doesn't matter. Can you see the importance of it? Because when you think about it, the will-based laws really only really operate until the at one moment condition in a lot of ways. They're still operating, of course, it's like, but it's like they don't exist anymore because your heart is now in line with God's love completely, so it's not like those laws don't exist anymore. Nothing's operating upon your will very much anymore. It's operating upon your desire. Change is going to happen because of engaging desire. This is why desire is such an important thing to understand because without it, change is impossible. Does everyone get that? Yeah. Fascinating, hey? Lani, thank you.